प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरे कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gunsham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you Bhaktos Jai Swami Narayan. <clears throat> Today marks the starting of our Yuva course, part one, 2020. <clears throat> For the past seven months, your course was conducted off of various different kinds of uh, scriptures, such as the Vachnamrud, Swamini Vato, um, Charitras, Kalyankarnika, so on and so forth. Based off of that, <clears throat> more on an advanced note, the second half of this year will be a little advanced in the Vachnamrud, Swamini Vato, and Charitras. so that we can understand Sri Ji Maharaj, his principles, and the Akantik Satpurusha's wish better off. That's why these different selected Vachnamnuts that we're going to take a look at will be displayed from week to week. Um, every two weeks, there will be a new course, and the other two weeks of the month, there will be Zoom conferences. So in one month, two courses will be conducted. There are a total of uh, 10 courses. So in a total span, including review weeks, uh, this will be a six-month course. And then in January, the examination will be held <clears throat> for everyone. So without further ado, today's Vachnamrut is Gadara Last Chapter 38. Gadara Last Chapter 38 Vachnamrut, which... Sri Ji Maharaj has spoken <clears throat> as you can see here in this Vachnamrut it's based off of the Sank scriptures and other and others and re all remaining happy forever Now, these scriptures, the Sank scriptures, are very advanced. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan's flawless technique of, <clears throat> of extracting the most highest principles and diluting them in such a way that even herdsmen and very low caste people can understand that was Bhagwan Swami Narayan's supremacy in one way now no one right now in society is going to go and read such kinds of scriptures the Vedas or any kind of advanced scriptures or ancient scriptures because number one the language is Sanskrit which is not uh, very very uh, applicable right now and it is very difficult to even study approximately it takes uh, uh, several years just to understand the language the flow of it the gra grammar and everything else but Bhagwan Swami Narayan did us all a favor and he extracted such kinds of principles and gave it to us in such a way that we would be able to understand and attain authentic kalyan or ultimate liberation in the easiest way possible. That's why we can definitely say thank you to Maharaj for such kind of blessings upon us. And our only now obligation is to 
understand such kinds of Rachanam roots, the principles, and imply it into our life to attain Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Rajipo and bliss. <clears throat> Again, the title is The Sank Scriptures and Others in Remaining Forever Happy. The introduction. Each and every Vachanamurta, as all of you know, have a heading which specifies the date, what Bhagwan Swaminarayan was wearing, where he was exactly seated, and who was seated in front of the assembly. Let's take a look. Swaminarayan Hare, <clears throat> on Vaishak Sut 14th, Samat 1885. The American calendar date is May 17th, 1829. Swami Sri Sajanji Maharaj was sitting in the mandir of Sri Gopinath Ji in Dada Khachar's Darbar in Gadara. He was dressed entirely in white clothes. At that time, an assembly of Paramahans, as well as devotees from various places, had gathered before him. This is a simple introduction and um, just stating, as I mentioned before, location and date and everything. But we want to move on into a deeper state. Um, and as you can see in the presentation slide, Maharaj was wearing white clothes, as you can see there. Nonetheless, <clears throat> on the left side is Dada Khachar's Darbargar, and that very tree is Prasadini. Bhagwan Swaminarayan sat under that tree, and he spoke many, many Vachnamruts for the sake of the Kalyan of others. Nonetheless, we would like to now move on to the Vachnamrut and understand that Bhagwan Swaminarayan's principles, how they are, and what he would like us to get from them. Now, I would like to read on, and we would like to follow. Thereupon, Sri Maharaj said, having pondered over the Sank scriptures as well as other scriptures, I have formed the conviction that all forms that are the result of entities evolved from Maya are false. Why? Because all of those forms will be destroyed by Kal. Conversely, the form of God in Akshardham and the form of the Muktas, the attendants of, the, of God, are all Satya, divine and extremely luminous. All the forms of God, all the forms of God and those Muktas is two-armed like that of a human being and is characterized by eternal existence, consciousness, and bliss. That God residing in Akshardham is served by those muktos and with various types of divine articles, and he is always present there to bestow supreme bliss upon those muktas. <clears throat> First and foremost, Maharaj is saying, having pondered over the Sank scriptures as well as other scriptures, I have formed the conviction. First of all, Sank scriptures. Sank scriptures are just a doctrine of scriptures that exemplify in detail that everything that is derived from Maya is perishable and will be vanish or will vanish one day. That's all the Sank scriptures say, in short. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan, after you can say reading it, he's putting here after pa after uh, pondering over and reading, he can say, Bhagwan Swaminarayan already knew these scriptures. Bhagwan Swaminarayan was the creator of these scriptures, may be indirectly through an avatar, but that saying so, Bhagwan had already known all these scriptures. Now he is forming a conviction that he would like all of us to form. But yet, he is saying, I have formed the conviction. Maharaj is talking in such a way that he is still remaining or he is still 
trying to put it or play or put into implication but in reality he wants all of us to understand the point that he's going to cross now the conviction that all forms that are the result of entities evolved from my are false that is from the science scripture straight why now he is connecting it with the Swaminarayan Sampraday in Akshardham. Because all those forms will be destroyed by Kal. Kal meaning time. Now if we think about it right now, <clears throat> from the smallest insect, some insects have lifespans of a day or two. And bacteria have li lifespans of seconds. And tortoises or turtles from uh, Madagascar have lifespans of 150 years. But that saying so, those were just some species that I mentioned. Nonetheless, may be, uh, you can say, a car. A car is bought brand new, but as time goes by, it's going to start to deteriorate and then pretty much go back into the earth. In the same way, anything and everything that that is seen on this earth or even not seen on this earth is going to vanish one day by kaaro. Kaaro meaning time. Once you give time, it's going to go, no matter what. And from there, we can understand that this body, the people that we call family, the people we call brother, sister, mother, or we, the people we call friends, they are also going to go one day. We know this. This is a fact that is fit into our mind, but yet it still is not fit into our soul. It's fit only into our mind. But once this very fact goes into our soul by thinking over and over and understanding, then only will one be able to worship God without any obstacles. Conversely, the form of God, so now Maharaj is saying, on the other hand, the form of God in Akshardham, number one, and the form of the muktos, the attendants of God, meaning muktos are the attendants of God or liberated souls that are there in Akshardham, engrossed in Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine murti or form who are residents of Akshardham. So number one, again, the form of God in Akshardham. Number two, the form of muktos, meaning the attendants of God, are all satya, satya meaning true, divine and extremely luminous. Three things, satya, divine, and extremely luminous. Satya meaning true. Since they are true, they cannot vanish. Since they are divine, they cannot vanish. And since they are extremely luminous, they cannot vanish. God has no limitation or no right to even enter into Akshardham. God meaning time. There is no time in Akshardham. It's, there is no, you cannot say that Akshardham, uh, if you go there, this many years have passed by. There is no proportion, there is no element of time in Bhagwan's divine abode Akshardham. Due to that very factor, time cannot touch Akshardham at all. Also, the form of that God and those muktos is too armed like that of a human being and it is characterized by eternal existence consciousness and bliss now the form of god as we can see here Buddha gansham maharaj has two arms two legs two eyes one nose two ears and that very form that bhagwan swaminarayan says is like that of a human being these words are very important. There is a lot of weight to certain words that Bhagwan Swaminarayan puts. And those muktos also have such kind of a form characterized by eternal existence, consciousness, and bliss. Now, in short, 
very much in short, everyone knows the soul does not have any kind of form. It is divine, it is luminous, but it does not have any kind of form. But one thing that Bhagwan Swami Narayan does for his liberated soul is gives him a divine form, gives that soul a divine form in Akshradham. Now you're probably wondering, how does that divine form look like? Well, according to the scriptures, Bhagwan Swami Narayan, however his form is, he gives the same kind of form to his muktos or his liberated souls so it's pretty much if you go there or if you get the divine darshan of akshradham you'll be able to see according to the vachanamrit bhagwan swami narayan sitting in his divine throne or standing however you wish in the middle and countless countless liberated souls looking or being engrossed in Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine form. This is kind of like, you can say, capture or TV capture, or you can say a preview of Akshardham. This is what it would look like, in short. So, all those muktos also have such kind of a form. Moving on. That God residing in Akshardham is served by those muktos with various types of divine articles and he is always present there to bestow supreme bliss upon those muktos. There is nothing else to do in Akshardham except to enjoy the bliss of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And how so? Well, Bhagwan explains that those muktos serve Bhagwan by various types of divine articles. According to the Vachnamna Gurdada middle chapter 13th, Bhagwan Swami Narayan states that anything that comes into the contact of God, any object, becomes nirgun and divine. In the same way, here in Akshadam, may it be a chariot, may it be a throne, may it be article of clothes, may it be divine, divine, luxurious um, ornaments, may it be anything. Everything over there is divine. And those muktos, those liberated souls, serve Bhagwan through such kind of articles. And Bhagwan gives them bliss. That's it. But that bliss is so divine. That bliss is unexplainable. That due to that, those muktos are so engrossed in God that they don't want to do anything else. This is a preview of Akshardham. They don't want to do anything else but to serve Bhagwan and enjoy his bliss. There is nothing else to do. That's one factor. And on the other factor, you're so engrossed. And let's put it this way. Putting it into modern text, <clears throat> modern example, suppose that you have not eaten for two days. Suppose you have not eaten for two days. And you are given your favorite food. Let's say it's pizza. And you are given your favorite food right in front of you. And you are told to eat it. Now, right there and then, maybe you forget to wash your hands. Maybe you wash your hands. And right away, you just start going at it. Just think about it. At that point, your vision is so focused on eating on the right side or the left side or somewhere near house or outside may it be an accident that's going on or may it be some kind of argument that's going on with the family members you do not even have any kind of sense of what's going on because all your senses all your vrittis are pulled into that one very vishay that one very you can say object due to that you become engrossed in the same way, just kind of like that, you become so engrossed that there, uh, on the, uh, you cannot fathom anything else in your mind. In the same way, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine bliss is so divine, is so divine, that
that once you ex experience that bliss, you become completely engrossed. Just like how we can say campers or sometimes we also have uh, those kinds of electric, uh, electric um, <clears throat> lights that you put at the back of your porch or in the front of your porch where at nighttime such kind of bugs come and they become lured into the light because they're engrossed. They don't know anything, what it's going to do to them, but they're so engrossed that they go into that light and they die because of the electric shock and they fall. But the important thing from that example to take is they become very, very engrossed due to that light. They don't know anything. They don't know if it, they're going to die. Nothing. They're just going to the light. In the same way, Bhagwan's form is so attractive. It's so beautiful that there is nothing else that there's nothing that you remember or there is nothing else to do there. Puja Guruji always mentions in his katha to explain Bhagwan's form, to explain Akshardham. After reading it, it's possible, but if you've experienced it, it's not anything that one can explain from one's mouth and the other opposite person can understand. But the best vision is of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Sriji Maharaj and his Vachnamrut and his Ekantik Satpurush. Such kind of vision that they give due to that, slowly but surely when we work on the path of climbing the steps of liberation, we can also experience such kind of bliss by their grace. Moving on. It is that same Supreme Purushottam Bhagwan who manifests on this earth out of compassion. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying this. For the purpose of granting liberation to the Jews, Bhagwan Swaminarayan only comes on this earth once. This universe's lifespan is very, very, very big. It cannot be put into human years. That's how big it is. It cannot be fathomed. Yet, Bhagwan Swaminarayan only visits one Brahman or one universe only once and leaves. Bhagwan Swaminarayan came on this earth for 49 years only. And yet, we are able to experience him even till now. That is one of his points of supremacy. But nonetheless, the main factor is Bhagwan manifests on this earth out of compassion. Think about it. There are countless universes. We may say that, oh, this universe, according to science, that they've only discovered this universe. But according to the scriptures in Hinduism, the Vedas, and so, and according to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnamrut, there are infinite universes. In Bhagwan Swaminarayan, goes to each universe only once. That is his niyam, or you can say that is his law. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan came on this earth 239 years ago out of compassion for the purpose of granting liberation to the Jews. He is presently visible before everyone. Here's one thing that Bhagwan Swaminarayan has done for us in this Vachnamrut as a very, very big gift. Throughout the Vachnamrut, 262 Vachnamruts, there are four total compilers, Sadguru Shri Muktanan Swami, our Adi Guru, Sadguru Shri Gopan Swami, Sadguru Shri Nityanan Swami, and Sadguru Shri Shukanan Swami. Those Sadgurus wrote exactly what Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke. That is a fact. But out of the 262 Vachnamruts, Bhagwan has spoken in third person very much. 
confusing the reader in some ways because right there and then obviously in front of Bhagwan 239 years ago 230 years ago or, or whenever whatever time it, when this Vachnamrut was uh, compiled like 200 years ago Bhagwan spoke and those all those Nan Santo Anadi Muktos those Haribhaktos there they knew that this was Bhagwan speaking so obviously it was not that difficult to comply but those readers of the future how will they understand how will they figure out that he is talking about himself? You can see it. That's why you need a Satpurush or an Ekantik Satpurush according to Gadda middle chapter 13th Vachnamrut. Bhagwan Swamilan states that when such kind of a Satpurush manifests, not takes birth, but manifests on this earth, one is able to understand such scriptures but one cannot understand by mere reading them. These are Bhagwan Swami Narayan's words in Gadara Middle Chapter 13th Vachnamrut. Saying so, Bhagwan Swami Narayan came on this earth, did his work, and went back in a flash, 49 years. But this very statement, if reading it very closely, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is revealing that it's me. He is presently visible before everyone. Who is he? The one who is speaking. The one who is speaking in Dada Kachar's Darbar, in, in, in sitting in the Mandir of Sri Gopinaji Maharaj, wearing white clothes. That very Bhagwan Sajananji Maharaj, that Maharaj is speaking. That is what Maharaj is saying. That Maharaj has come from Akshardham out of the compassion of all these souls. He is speaking. He is your Ishtadev, meaning your Bhagwan. He is the one to worship. And he accepts your service. In fact, there is absolutely no difference between the manifest form of Purushottam Bhagwan visible before you and the form of God residing in Akshardham, both are one. Out of there are many, many Vachnamruts to understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Upasna or to understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan to be supreme. But Gadada middle chapter 13 and this Vachnamrut, Gadada last chapter 38, are very pinnacle Vachnamruts to completely, you can say, seal it or lock it down if one reads it analyzes it and understands such kinds of vachramruts through the mouth of an ekantik satpurush one will be able to develop firm conviction of bhagwan swami Narayan and attain his akshardham easily over here it says there is no difference between the manifest form of purushottam bhagwan visible before you and the form of God residing in Akshardham. Meaning, that is a direct connection right there. All those Vachnamruts, Bhagwan Swami, this is the second to last Vachnamrut. There are a total of 262 Vachnamruts. This is the 261st Vachnamrut. Bhagwan Swami Narayan states this very fact. Due to that, it makes a connection that all those Vachnamruts that were spoken before the 260 maybe even if Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke in third person still all imply that this Bhagwan Swami Narayan and the one in Akshardham they're all just one Ikkaj Bhagwan there is only one Bhagwan both are one moreover this manifest form of Purushottam Bhagwan is the controller of all including Akshar he is the Lord of of all of the Ishwars and the cause of all causes. He reigns supreme and he is the cause of all the avatars. Wow. Moreover, he is worthy of being worshipped single mindedly by all of you. The many previous avatars of this God 
are worthy of being bowed down to and bowed down to and worthy of reverence bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan is stating that he is stating his exact you can say power to us and giving us the facts that he is the controller of all including akshar akshar is bhagwan's divine abode akshar dham meaning those muktos there and akshar is you can say bhagwan's akshar dham bhagwan controls that akshar dham he is the lord of all the ishwars and the causes of all causes he is the lord of all ishwars everyone all those deities all those ishwars everyone he is the lord of all those and he is the causes of all, cause of all causes everything that we see here or we don't see is all done by bhagwan swami narayan he reigns supreme meaning he is sarvopari he is he, he, there is no one that is higher than him there is no one even that is on one level with him everyone is below him that is you can say a very straightforward definition of supreme and he is the cause of all the avatars this very factor proves that bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme lord only bhakto if we have faith and affection and trust in bhagwan swami narayan's words in this vachanamrut moreover he is worthy of being worshiped single mindedly by all of you Just two things you'll see the many previous avatars of this god are worthy of being bowed down to and worthy of reverence worshiped and bowed down those two words have a big difference who can you worship or what can be worshiped well bhagwan swami narayan's form can be worshiped through meditation through you can see chanting his mantra through developing affection for him and the second hand bow down bow down is a form of respect bhagwan swami narayan also states in the shiksha patri that if one happens to cross the mandir of shiv bhagwan or so on other mandirs one should bow down with reverence bhagwan swami narayan respects all in every way all deities avatars bhagwan swami narayan does not have anything to do with that but moreover stating the facts very clearly but one swami narayan puts a difference he is worthy of being worshiped single mindedly by all of you the previous avatars meaning the 24 avatars but one swami narayan is not in the 24 avatars he is outside of it because he is autari autari meaning the one that <clears throat> the one that is beyond those uh, avatars or avatars and the one who creates such avatars and this god or this god is worthy of being and the many previous avatars of this god of this god are worthy of being bowed down to and worthy of reverence meaning bow down in respect Puja Guru ji's quote respect all follow one hate none if implied there in this very position that can also be said bhagwan swami narayan states very clearly in this vachanam with the facts just one vachanam before he finishes his leela and goes back to akshardham this is the 261st vachanam but this vachanam completely seals our address because if i give an example suppose we want to post one small envelope which has a check of 1 million dollars from new jersey to california in the best mail service let's say fedex and <clears throat> fedex mail and express of reach in one day and in the address the real address is 
100 Main Street. Instead of that, we put 101 Main Street by accident. It will not reach its destination. In the same way, understanding and clarifying the Upasana that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the Supreme Lord of Lords, the causes of causes, and the one to be worshipped, that is exactly putting that address of 100 Main Street meaning that will unlock our position in Akshardham. At the end of this life, Bhagwan Swaminarayan will come and take our soul to Akshardham. But if we do not understand Bhagwan Swaminarayan's form completely, that he is the Autari, he is not an avatar, he, he is supreme, if we do not understand these kinds of facts straight, then in this like putting 101 or 102 or even 1001 which will not take us to our destination which is akshardham moving on in this vachnamuk bhagwan swami narayan <clears throat> takes another turn now everyone wants to be happy in this life Everyone wants to be happy in this life, may it be through engaging in the vishes, may it be through enjoying it through family, friends, or anything. Everyone wants to be happy. But what are the principles and how can we become happy according to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's standards? Well, first, Bhagwan Swami Narayan characterize, characterizes who will never be happy in life. Well, number one, those who keep greed for wealth and other material objects, they will never be happy. Number two, desires to associate with women. Such kind of people will never be happy. Attachment of the tongue to various tastes. Such kind of people will never be happy. Belief that one is the body. Fifth, affection for kusangis or evil-minded people. And sixth, attachment to one's relatives. If any of these six factors, if they touch our life, in some way we are not happy, according to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's principles. Now, saying that, does any of these six touch our life? That's a question that we should ask. If they do, we should remove our weakness for any of these six and... <clears throat> and develop affection for God and His Ekantik Satpurush. Now, if we cannot see them, the best way is to associate with the Ekantik Satpurush and identify our flaws and then eradicate. Number two, characteristics of those who will always be happy. Well, number one, <clears throat> Those who desire to be happy should eradicate such sobhavs, meaning destroy such kind of faults, maintain nivrutti, meaning live a, a, a very dormant life, not too active, and not keep the company of equals. One should also attach one's jiv to the bhakta of God, the great saint, who does not identify himself, his self with the body, who possesses vaidagya, who feels that he has transgressed a major injection of God, even if he has transgressed a minor injection, one should act according to his command by thought, word, and deed. Also, one should certainly avoid the vishes, and in no way should one allow them to come near by abandoning one's niyams. If one does begin to associate with the vishes, one will certainly fall. This should be accepted as a universal principle. Bhagwan Swaminarayan ends his Vachnamrut in such a way that he explains two things, the way to be happy and the way for those who are not happy. It is our duty, obligation, as satsangis and haribhaktos of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, may it be male, may it be females, but it is our obligation to identify if our life touches any of the top six points. If they do, then 
we should imply that some way we are obviously unhappy because Bhagwan Swami Narayan has sta stated so it can never be false and slowly but surely the bottom six points should be implied in so entire, inside of our life so that we can become happy in that way so this was our Vachnamrut Gadada last chapter 38 <clears throat> if you have any questions regarding this Vachnamrut you are more than welcome to email us at loyadamnj at the rate gmail.com moving on to Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swamini Vato Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swamini Vato Swaminarayan Hare Swaminarayan Hare one may become burnt out of out by performing austerities one may become burnt out by performing austerities but if one does not have firm refuge in God then God will not come to take one to Akshar Dham during one's last moments and if one sleeps comfortably on a swing and eats sweetened milk and rice while others serve one still if one's refuge is firm God will sit seat one in the divine chariot and take one to Akshardham. Therefore, the cause of moksha is refuge of God. The refu there is nothing like that of refuge of God. This is Prakran 1, Vat number 173. Taking the refuge of God is kind of like taking an umbrella when it's raining. Taking the refuge of God is taking shelter under a hurricane and tornado weather taking the refuge of God such kind of person will never become unhappy because the one who takes refuge of God is completely completely submissive to his master we are the servant he is the master whatever the servant says we would follow Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that those who follow the Shikshapatri will become happy in this life and the life beyond. Those words will never go wrong. And those who have exercised and lived according to the Shikshapatri, according to the Vachnamrut, have become happy and are happy. That's why refuge in God is the most important not austerities or any other kinds of spiritual endeavors that's why I take refuge right now currently in this you can say pandemic of COVID-19 many many bhaktos are affected by this pandemic but they have refuge of God whatever Bhagwan is doing is for our wellness whatever God is doing will only clean and purify our heart and soul such kind of understanding, such kind of thoughts, due to that, they remain happy even if they have such kind of illness. And if they have to release this body due to God's will, they release it in a happy fashion and go to Bhagwan's Akshar Dham. Such kind of understanding can only be gained through Bhagwan's grace and through the Akantik Satpurusha's Samagam. And such kind of understanding from such kinds of Vachnamur. So we are very fortunate to have the refuge of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the Supreme Lord of Lord, the causes of causes, as we read in this Vachnamrut, who is Autari, is the cause of all these avatars, such kinds of words. When we wake up, we should think about in our mind so that we can better understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's form. And saying so, we can attain Akshardham with little ease. At the end of this, um, we have a charitra. Uh, all of you will be able to read it. It's uh, Parvat Bhai of Agatrai. The, this course will be put into um, all the groups in Loyadam Parivar, so more than welcome. If you would like this UA course, you can email us at loyadamnj at the rate gmail.com. So this is our course uh, one for today. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminari.